monster. This is the gypsy moth caterpillar. It threatens to change our quality of life in Washington state. It may not look dangerous by itself, and if there were just a few of them, it might not be such a worry. But the problem is, they multiply by the thousands. And once they get established in an area, it is literally impossible to get rid of them. It is what they eat that threatens our quality of life. They feed on hundreds of different kinds of trees. Each caterpillar can eat up to a square foot of leaves each day. When they get out of control, they can destroy entire forests. This is what the gypsy moth caterpillar can do when it is feeding. It is an all too common sight in many eastern states where the gypsy moth has become a constant pest. Ask somebody who has lived there. Ask them what it is like to live with the gypsy moth. This problem had, been, had gotten so intense in that area that they were eating everything that they saw in sight. And they ate 24 hours a day. They never stopped. In the daytime, you lived with them because you were in touch with them. They fell on you. You had to pick them out of your hair. They're dangling off the trees. They're all over the ground. They're in your car. They're in your house. Um, I remember one night laying down to go to sleep and suddenly becoming aware of a sensation of something crawling on my neck and I reached up and brushed it off and I realized it was a gypsy moth caterpillar. I just remember going into the forest behind my grandfather's house and looking at trees and seeing that they were literally moving and you didn't understand until you got closer and you could see each individual caterpillar which was the gypsy moth caterpillar crawling up the trees and then week, a couple weeks later seeing that those trees were totally defoli defoliated. It was just, it was a mess because they were just hanging everywhere. And uh, it was just like, uh, it was almost like that movie, uh, Alfred Hitchcock and the Birds, that these caterpillars were just absolutely everywhere. We went up to this outcropping of rocks and I just looked down and I just said to my brother, what is all this? And there was just, you know, it, it, miles of dead, dead trees and right about where we were they were all oaks and they were so pretty but it was the middle of june and they were just dead they were totally dead when they finished with the trees they started on the shrubs on the ground so you couldn't even get any green there there just wasn't any green just wasn't any green could it happen here yes the gypsy moth is firmly established in 14 states and spreading. If the gypsy moth is not stopped now, soon you might not be able to recognize the evergreen state. Some years are worse than others back east. 1981 was the worst year in recent times. 13 million acres were defoliated. Eric Lagasa is the chief entomologist for the Washington State Department of Agriculture. The, the statistics that come out of the Northeast in terms of defoliation are for total defoliation. That's where there are no leaves left at all. And the statistics don't cover what areas are partly defoliated on an annual basis. And in large part, where gypsy moth is established on the East Coast, there is some defoliation every year. They try to keep it under control. But that's all they can do. They have to live with it or move away. When people from those eastern states come to Washington state, they sometimes bring the gypsy moth with them. Like its name implies, the gypsy moth likes to travel, and it hitches rides here every year. And they seem to like it here. In, in looking at the introduced populations that we've had here in the Northwest, going back uh, over 15 years now, we have seen situations where we've had local introductions uh, where household moves have brought egg masses out from the East Coast, where very clearly gypsy moth is doing very, very well. And some of the, the native plants that we have here in, in Washington State that gypsy moth obviously thrives on would include some of the more common uh, species. Alder is, is a very favored host here in the Northwest by gypsy moth. Not just hardwood trees are threatened. 
the gypsy moth caterpillar can and will eat some evergreens too. So with an abundance of available food, the Northwest is a prime target for this monster. And it could be even more devastating here than it is in the East. The deciduous trees there can recover from a defoliation. They do relief. Conifers, evergreens on the other hand, don't have that ability to relief. Uh, their, their needles are permanent needles and if you take all the needles off a conifer, you've effectively killed the tree. It, it cannot recover. If the gypsy moth is allowed to become established in the northwest, it could add up to millions, even billions of dollars in damage. Timber is obviously impacted. Recreation too will be affected. Of course, tourism would suffer. And it's hard to estimate the overall effect on the environment. In time, the loss of trees would also damage wildlife habitat and watersheds. Additional dollars would have to be spent to protect trees and shrubs in yards, parks, and forests. But for now, it is a phantom monster, one we cannot see. I, I think it's very significant to note that we, that no one except for the Department of Agriculture has ever seen gypsy moth in Washington State before. And I think that's an indication of the sensitivity and the power of the detection tools that we've got. We can find these populations when they are still so small that no one has ever seen them. To find them, we wait until after the caterpillar's feeding frenzy, after it goes into its pupa or cocoon stage, when it is a full-fledged adult moth. That is when we can find them. The detection tool is this trap. You may have seen it in the summer throughout western Washington and in parts of eastern Washington. It's a simple trap. The pheromone lure inside the trap carries the scent of the female moth. The male moth picks up that scent with his oversized antenna from as far away as a mile and gets caught in the trap's sticky lining. The trap is what stands between us and the devastation in the east. In the late 70s, when gypsy moth started being introduced in significant numbers here, the, the improved pheromone lure became available at, the, at that point in time. And that enabled us to find it where it's introduced here, and, and that really is the key to keeping it out. We can find it where it's introduced in a very uh, cost-effective uh, and very sensitive um, powerful way with, with the lures that are available. When a male moth is trapped, then the process begins to narrow in on the exact location of the infestation. By immediately placing more traps in the area and establishing a pattern of catches, we can get a pretty good fix on that location. Or at least we could. That's because until 1990, the gypsy moth we have dealt with was the European strain. And the female European gypsy moth doesn't fly. So when we catch a European male moth, we know the European female and the eggs she laid are not far away. We have experience in tracking her down and wiping out the small localized gypsy moth infestations we have had here. European strain gypsy moth are brought in every year from the east and every year we track them down and eradicate them so that what has happened there won't happen to Washington State. But now there is a new gypsy moth monster taking center stage and it is potentially even more dangerous. In my mind as an entomologist I have no doubt that we are dealing with the King Kong here of, of exotic pest threats. This, this insect has the potential to be worse than the worst exotic insect introduced to date, that being the European form. The King Kong of exotic pest threats is the Asian gypsy moth. It is very much like the European gypsy moth brought here from eastern states. They look almost exactly alike and act pretty much the same with two very major, very dangerous differences. The female Asian gypsy moth can fly. That makes the pest a lot harder to control. It is harder to find an infestation and any infestation can spread quickly. Our tools for detecting an infestation are based on 
male moth catches. And with the flightless female, where you catch the males is where the females are. But with a flighted female, where you catch the males is where the female was, uh, potentially. And she can disperse from that point in any direction, 20 miles or more, and we, we don't know where the female moth ends up. The other dangerous difference between the Asian gypsy moth and the European gypsy moth that has devastated eastern states is that this new threat has a larger menu. In its native eastern Russia, it thrives on a conifer tree, the larch. We, we suspect that as a result of that ability uh, to establish on, on at least larch, that it would be able to establish and survive and thrive on a predominantly conifer diet here in the Northwest. So that is actually the second major difference from the European in the Asian form that, that's fairly scary. It, it could do quite well on a pure conifer diet. We have every reason to fear this new monster because the threat is here now. The first ever detections of the Asian gypsy moth in North America were made in the Pacific Northwest in 1991. The Asian gypsy moth is also a traveler, but instead of coming cross country from the eastern United States, it traveled here across the Pacific Ocean. Ships that had stopped at eastern Russian ports likely introduced the pest to Washington while visiting the port of Tacoma. The discovery was like an alarm. Warning us of imminent danger, the recognition of this new monster in our midst required an immediate response. An emergency program to protect the Northwest and the rest of the U.S. from the Asian gypsy moth was put into effect early in 1992. To eliminate the Asian gypsy moth found here, a large area spraying project was put in the air. Teams of helicopters applied BT, a biological insecticide, to approximately 116,000 acres that encompassed the eight catch sites. But the spraying was only part of the plan. The United States Department of Agriculture also developed strategies to prevent ships that might be carrying Asian gypsy moths from entering U.S. ports. And to detect any further introductions, we increased our regular gypsy moth trapping program by tenfold. More than 120,000 traps were placed primarily in western Washington to find any Asian gypsy moth as well as European gypsy moth introductions. It takes this these kind of vigilance, eight, this kind nine, of immediate response, 12, to make sure that you never see a gypsy moth in the state of Washington. I'm working with the Washington State Department of Agriculture and we're out setting out insect traps to detect new occurrences of the gypsy moth. The eradication and trapping programs put in place by the Washington State Department of Agriculture over the past 15 years have been successful at eliminating the European gypsy moth before it becomes established. And we hope to have the same success with the Asian gypsy moth. As we continue to protect the forests, the agriculture, the natural environment of the Evergreen State, and your quality of life.